We're going to learn how you can easily make this clean and professional text animation today. How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Yo, it's Herman here back on the Olufemi channel and boy, we've got an exciting week ahead. For the next five days, we're going to learn how to make some sick text animations in After Effects. As we move from static graphics from magazines and posters to videos on social media, adding animation adds personality to our text and makes it eye-catching. I've been guilty of learning techniques that seem cool at first but I didn't know how to apply them to actually make them look good. So I'll be fusing animated text with modern design trends for you guys to get the most value out of what you'll be learning. So each video this week, you'll build something presentable that you can use as a title card, logo stinger, or YouTube intro. We're gonna start things off nice and easy with our first style, minimalism. You'll see this used so often and I don't think minimalism is going anywhere. Luckily, it doesn't take insane techniques to accomplish. I swear it's not just an excuse to be lazy. Now I'll be going forward under the assumption that you know your After Effects basics, meaning you know what most of the tools are, what masking is, what keyframing is, etc. Now, if you are an absolute beginner, then I recommend first checking out my After Effects Basics tutorial by clicking the little pop-up over there. You can also download the project file that I'm using in the description below so that you can follow along. With all that said, let's hop over to After Effects and get started. So here we are in the interface and you'll see that there are some lovely folders that are already made for you. Basically, we're just gonna start things from scratch and we're gonna first create a new composition. How we're gonna do that is by hitting this button over here. If you didn't know already, uh, we're gonna call this minimalism main comp maybe. We'll make it HD and duration 10 seconds, sure. And then I'll just toggle this so that we have a nice black background. It's a little bit easier to see. And we're gonna hit this uh, type tool we're just gonna write minimalism, minimalism. We may as well just make it all caps. I kind of like that when it's just kind of like one word. We just hit this button over here, this all caps. I'll make all of it caps as the name implies. And in this case, what I wanna kind of do is use a serif font. And what that means is basically any fonts that have that fancy little decorative stroke that kind of finishes off the letter. It makes it a little more elegant, a little more fancy, something that we're kind of going with, especially since everything else will be quite simple. So you can pick your favorite serif font. In this case, I'm just gonna use something like Adobe font because I am in the Adobe ecosystem. So I have access to this. So if you just type up something like serif, it'll show up uh, something like like this, serif, uh, noto serif. These are all great options. So I'm gonna use a font called Laura, which I found on Adobe fonts, so Laura. And then we're going to uh, have it so that we center the text. So it's like that. And then we are going to align it in the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move the anchor point to the center by hitting the shortcut control alt home. So now it's in the center of the text and then I'll hit control home so that it centers it to the composition. And then now I can adjust the size like that and it'll stay in the center, sort of. It's actually a little bit misaligned, which is okay. I'll just hit the same shortcuts again. So we change that to the center and then center it like that. This is a great start. So now we need to animate it. And we're gonna do a really simple text reveal. So it's going to look like it's hidden and then it kind of like comes out from this hidden cutout. That was a terrible explanation. So let me just show you. So you should already know what keyframing is and we're going to hit P to bring up the position. And then we're going to hit the stopwatch. So we have this keyframe over here and this is gonna be the final position. This is where we want the text to end up. And we're gonna move that, I don't know, to like one second over here. So in the beginning at zero over here, we're going to move it down just like that. And then now if I play it back by hitting spacebar, it moves like that, but that's not elegant. That's not smooth. So what we'll do is ease the movement by highlighting both the keyframes. We're gonna hit F9. That's how you easy ease the keyframes. And we're going to just, you know, select one of them like this and go to the graph editor and then make sure that you're at the speed value graph. Now, if you don't have that already, then you should click this over here and make sure that this is checked off, edit speed graph, and it'll show you something like this. Then now you can just grab the handle for one of the keyframes like this and drag it over like that. And what that does is it'll kind of like ramp up in speed and then it'll kind of feather out and slow down. So let me just show you, go back over here. Nice and smooth. So this is what we got so far. This is uh, a little bit too simple. So what we're doing is, like I said, it's going to kind of reveal itself. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to create a mat. And how we can do that is we can use a shape. So in this case, we're gonna to go to the rectangle tool like that. Uh, make sure that the fill over here is all the way to white. Hit okay. Stroke is none, like that. Okay, so we don't have a stroke. It's just a fill. And we are going to draw a rectangle. Like this and we're going to make it so that when the text is in this white box or rectangle that we just created that's when we can actually see it so any anywhere that it's out of that white box it's going to be transparent so if you don't see your track mat options over here you can hit toggle switches and modes like that and then now we're going to change the track mat for this layer this text layer to 
Lumimet. And basically it's going to use the brighter portions or the white in this case to tell us what will show through. Everything else will be transparent. So in this case, watch this. If I scrub like that, as you can see, when it's out of that white box that we drew, uh, it's transparent. And then when it comes in to that white box, it's actually uh, opaque. And then as you can see, the shape layer is now um, hidden. And just make sure this shape layer is directly on top of your text layer in order for this to happen. And we'll just rename that matte because that's what this is. It's a it's a matte. And this is the bare bones on how you can make a simple yet clean animation for your text. And then now going forward, everything else will just be to make it presentable because having this white text on black background is not exactly the prettiest thing to look at. So we're going to go ahead and hit control Y so we can make a new solid. We'll just call it background that and we'll put it on the very bottom and don't worry about the color because we're going to adjust that. So we're going to apply an effect to the solid called a gradient ramp. And how we do that is we can go to the effects and presets panel over here and then just look up gradient ramp or you can use a uh, plugin called effects console by video copilot, which I use quite often to save me a little bit of time from dragging my cursor all the way to the effects and presets panel. So my shortcut for that is control space bar. Again, it's called effects console and uh, we're going to look up gradient ramp second one over here. And then now we have this nice gradient, but I don't really want it to be monochromatic like that. I'm going to have the starting color to be yeah. whenever I'm not sure I can always go to Adobe's color Adobe like this and then just explore different color palettes, which is a nice way to find some different colors. We're going to look for something a little more soft. Let's go for like a summer type of vibe. So this color palette's not bad. It reminds me of this sand castle, which is the inspiration for this palette. So I'm just going to copy the colors for this. Uh, let's go with something like this yellow over here. I'm going to go back to After Effects and then we could just hit this box over here to bring this up and then we can input the value that we just copied like that and we can go back over here and let's say uh, let's do kind of like this sandy color like that as the end color and put that in like this and then now we can adjust the position of this gradient so as you'll see there's a starting ramp which is over here At this point we can move that over to this corner over here and then we can move this bottom one to the corner over here and right now because it's a white text and this is a little bit of a bright color let's actually adjust that so that the yellow is a little bit darker like that so that the text stands out now this gradient is making it look a little bit better but i think we can add a little more texture to it so it looks a little more visually appealing and that's where envato elements comes in because once i pull up their site and i look up something like i don't know paper texture they have such a wide variety of selections from stock videos to music to sound effects and graphics is a section that i'm looking for right now because i'm looking for a textured background something like this might work out so I'm just going to click that, hit the big shiny red download button, and then we'll add that into the animated text tutorial. And as simple as that, I now have 22 paper textures that I can use for this project. So once I've imported that in, I'm going to use this paper texture 20 like that. I'm just going to drop it on top like so. I'm going to hit S so I can rescale it down a little bit because that's a little bit big. And then I'm going to move that on top of the minimalism uh, background. And of course, we want to use that gradient and that color from that solid down over here. So we're going to change the blending mode to something like soft light like that. And it's very subtle, but you can see some paper texture, which is nice. And uh, I think I'm going to actually darken the background a little more. So I'm going to go to the effects control over here. I'm going to add an effect called curves. And I'm just going to bring the values down a little bit. So I darken it just a little bit, making it a little bit easier to see the white text. And we can still see a little bit of that paper texture. And this is what we have so far. Not too shabby. Now, before we continue, let's take a small break to talk about this little thing that I made called Enter the Future. It's a motion graphic asset pack that I handcrafted and includes a variety of assets you can use for your music videos, commercials, live streams, narrative films, you name it. So if you need transitions, borders, or custom text animations to give your video a modern edge, I recommend checking it out. All right, back to After Effects. Now, although minimalism is about having, you know, less is more, and we don't want to add anything that is not essential to this design, but if we want to add a little more details to make it look interesting but not you know have it feel too cluttered then what you can do is add these small details like lines let's add one on top and one on the bottom and to determine where i want to put them i'm just going to hit the shortcut control apostrophe this is an apostrophe i spelled apostrophe wrong. so control apostrophe and basically that brings up some grids as you can see these green lines and i can use them as a reference onto where i want to kind of draw my line i'm going to make sure the pen tool is selected if it isn't already and I'm just going to click once over here in this corner and I'm just aligning it kind of over here. 
and then I will draw one over here. And I'm going to hold shift to make sure that it's a completely straight line and I don't have to second guess myself because that seems to happen quite often. And you're going to notice that nothing is showing up. And the reason is because right now I have the fill at white, but there is no stroke. So I want to change that so that the fill is nothing because we are not filling in a shape. And we're going to change the stroke so it's a solid color. And right now it's white and you can change the stroke width to whatever that you like. In this case, we're just going to keep it at three because it's nice and thin and not distracting. And then we're going to call the shape layer line. And although this section is not animating the text, it is making the text look a little bit better. So I'm going to go through how to animate this line, just a very simple way of doing so. We're just going to hit this arrow so we have more options over here. And over here next to the add, we're going to add an animation called trim paths right over here. And then we're going to hit that arrow so we see more of this. And all we're going to do is we're going to uh, keyframe the start and the end position. So right now at end over here, it's at 100%. So basically it's at its end position where you see the full line. So we're going to hit the stopwatch over here. Okay, we're going to move that keyframe a little bit. And then we're going to go to the very beginning and we're going to hit zero like that. So now we're going to also highlight it and hit F9. So we easy ease the keyframe exactly like what we did when we were animating the text. And then if we want to get a little bit fancy, we can even go to the graph editor and then just move that handle over so that now we have the same matching speed as this animated text like that. One line on top feels pretty not balanced, right? So we're going to highlight this layer when hit control D. So we have two lines now. And for this one, we're going to hit the shortcut R. So we bring up the rotation and then we're going to rotate it 180. Okay, just like that. And then now you have two lines. So if I play it back, boom, you have one line that's shooting across from right to left, one on top from left to right, and it looks more dynamic that way, but it also still feels minimalistic. And we're just gonna add a little more detail, although this is still minimalism, bear that in mind. And we're gonna add some small text to act as accents. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the text tool over here. And let's say that uh, on the top over here, we'll just like write my name or something. Herman Wong, that's way too big. Let's highlight that and let's shrink it down all the way to, uh, I guess 16 is not bad. And then we're going to move this by just dragging it over so that it is aligned to the line. And we're going to hit control apostrophe. So we just make sure that it's going to kind of match where we will have the next text, which will be on the bottom right. So I'm going to hit control D so that I duplicate this text layer like so. And I'm just going to move this text all the way down to the bottom right corner and I'm just having it kind of like this. Actually, I don't need to align it yet because I'm going to change this to something else. So I'll write like 2022 tutorial and then I will align it. And then these are the uh, little accent texts and I want to kind of animate them. Honestly, I want to add some movement to them. So I'm going to highlight both of them. This is uh, both of the text layers that we just created. We're going to hit P and then we're going to animate it at one second. We're going to hit the stopwatch over here. This will be the end position and we're going to go to zero. And then just like what we did before, we're going to have these small texts just kind of appear, but they're going to appear from uh, the line. So that line is going to be uh, the invisible box. Again, let me just show you for my name over here. I'm just going to have it like this. And for the text on the bottom, we're just going to animate it like that. And then we're going to highlight the keyframes, hit F9. So we ease it and then we're going to highlight these keyframes, go to the graph editor, and I'm going pretty fast, but this is because we just did this like twice already. So there's a third time doing it. And then now we have something like this, but as I said, I want it to kind of reveal itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a different way of revealing this text. Instead of using a mat, I'm going to highlight both of these layers, these text layers. I'm going to hit control shift C to pre-compose them. I'm going to make sure that we move all the attributes into the new composition. So this one is highlighted and we're just going to call this uh, detail text animated like that. And then this time, instead of using a mat, we're going to basically just draw a mask. While this layer is highlighted, we're going to go to the rectangle tool like this, and we're going to draw basically where the line is. And it's okay if I don't get it exactly correct because I can always hit V. So I'm back to the selection tool. I'm going to double click this mask, and then I'm just going to zoom in and move this over like that. And then we're going to change the mask so that it is subtract instead of add. So basically that little box, anything within that box is going to be subtracted. So let's check out what we have so far. We're going to fit it up to 100 so we can see it in all its glory. Actually, I'm going to make the background even a little bit darker so we have that text kind of stand out. Now let's play it back. That's a good looking animation.
That is it guys, that is how you make a clean and professional text animation. Even though I used a serif font and bright tone colors, you can easily adjust the font and colors to match the theme of your video. For example, you can use sans serif fonts and bluer tones for something more corporate or apply grungier textures for something more slick. Let me know in the comments what you end up using this text animation for. Oh, and make sure that you subscribe to the Olufemi channel so that you don't miss the next four videos on text animation and hit the bell notification so that you can stay on top of things. If you wanna check out what I'm personally up to, my YouTube and Instagram handles are below. Otherwise, again, my name is Herman, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.